Technology, ever-changing and ever-growing, brings us the future we've always imagined. But how did it get to where we are now? And where will it go next? Technology is penetrating all areas of our lives. But along with convenience and innovation, it also brings risks. Let's find out what technological advances can be dangerous and how we can use them safely and responsibly. The name for robot has dark origins. If you look into the etymology of robot, it comes from the Czech word robota, which translates to forced labor or work. The word was first used to refer to a fictional humanoid in a play in 1920. Android is gender specific. The word android literally means a human with a male robot appearance. The female equivalent of this word is a gynoid. Samsung is 38 years and one month older than Apple. Samsung was founded as a grocery store on March 1, 1938 by Lee Byung-cho. Apple founders Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak created Apple Computer Inc. on April 1, 1976. There's a name for when you feel your phone vibrate, but it doesn't. This is my favorite tech fact on this list. Phantom Vibration Syndrome is the name for when someone thinks their phone is vibrating. But it isn't. Research suggests the cause for this is someone being over-involved with their phone. Some people are afraid of technology. People have all kinds of weird fears and phobias out there. And technology is no exception. Aptly named technophobia, this fear stemmed from the Industrial Revolution and workers being afraid that machines would take their jobs. It applies in a similar way to today's society, as well as people being scared of technology getting too advanced, such as artificial intelligence technology. Let's just hope this phobia doesn't stop them from watching this video. Music content makes up 5% of YouTube. Even though 5% seems like a low number, it is the most engaged type of video on YouTube. They count for 20% of YouTube's total views. The first camera needed an incredibly long exposure. The first photograph ever taken in 1826 took eight hours to expose. The creator of that camera, Louis Daguerre, was able to lower that time drastically to just 15 minutes in 1839. Credit card chips have been around for a long time. To many, credit card chips are a relatively new fad. However, chip technology has been around since 1986. It was first used in France, followed shortly after by Germany. Alexa is always listening to your conversations. This probably isn't new to you. Siri has been doing it forever. Alexa stores your dialogue history in its cloud to help improve your Alexa experience. But you can review and delete these recordings, either in bulk or individually. People read faster or slower, depending on what they read from. Not only do you blink less when you're on a computer, but reading from a screen also slows you down. On average, people read 10% slower from a screen than from paper. For the blinking part, did you know that during everyday life, people normally blink at a rate of 20 times per minute? But put them in front of a computer, and that number drops way down to 7 times per minute. The first computer mouse wasn't made from plastic, back in 1964. Doug Engelbart invented the first ever computer mouse. Back then, it was made out of wood. It was rectangular and featured a little button on the top right. 
He called it a mouse because the cord coming out of the back reminded him of the tiny rodents. The original Xbox had sound snippets of real space missions. The original Xbox contained edited sound bites from actual transmissions from the Apollo missions. If you left the Xbox on the home screen, eventually you'll hear whispers of conversation, actual chatter from the Apollo mission. The first alarm clock could only ring at one time. Literally, one time. The first mechanical alarm clock could only ring at 4 a.m., invented by Levi Hutchins in 1787. It wasn't until 1876 that a wind-up alarm clock was made that could be set for any time. The first online gaming was before the year 2000. Sega Dreamcast was the first 128-bit console to hit the market. Released in 1999, it was the first console that allowed real-time online play. Unfortunately, it was a little too early for its time, as back then most internet connections were not reliable enough. The first product scanned was a packet of chewing gum in 1974. Norman Joseph Woodland invented the barcode and received a patent in October 1952. It wasn't until 22 years later, when he was employed by IBM, that the barcode was developed to be used for product labeling. Known as the Universal Product Code, UPC, a system that is still used today. You're in good hands if your surgeon was a gamer. Oddly enough, surgeons that grew up playing video games more than three hours per week make 37% fewer errors. Not only that, but they also had a 42% faster completion rate when it comes to performing laparoscopic surgery, as well as suturing. Everyone uses Google as a spell checker. Most everyone anyway. 97% of people type in words to Google just to see if they spelled it right. I know I'm definitely among that 97%. The first word to ever be autocorrected was te. Back in the day, autocorrect wasn't as efficient as it is now. In order to autocorrect te to the, you had to press the left arrow and F3. Over 6,000 new computer viruses are created and released every month. This number has drastically risen since 1,990, at which point there were only 50 known computer viruses. Today, 90% of emails contain some form of malware, and most people don't know about it. The first computer virus was harmless. In 1971, the first ever computer virus was developed. Named Creeper, it was made as an experiment just to see how it spread between computers. The virus simply displayed the message, I'm the Creeper, catch me if you can. The first virus ever released into the wild was called Brain, which also wasn't harmful. However, it was the very first IBM PC virus. NASA's internet speed is 91 GB per second. The average household internet speeds are roughly 25 MB per second, which is usually fast enough to watch Netflix with no buffer time. And let's face the fact, if there's any tech company that would actually make good use of their internet speeds, it's NASA. More people have cell phones than toilets. Out of all the 7 and 7 tenths billion people in the world, over 6 billion of those have access to a cell phone. Meanwhile, only 4 and 5 tenths billion have access to working toilets. The first web page is still running. In 1991, 
Tim Berners-Lee was working on developing the World Wide Web. There are no graphics and no background, just plain text and links on how to use the internet. Millions of hours of TV and movies are watched every day on Netflix. Of course, Netflix is a massively popular company, so it's not that big of a surprise. The world spends about 164 million hours every day streaming Netflix, which is equivalent to 18,812 years worth of TV and movies every 24 hours. There's a term for old people who use the internet. Seniors who are over 50 and use the internet on a regular basis are rare these days. So rare, in fact, there's a term for it. Silver surfers. Until 2010, carrier pigeons were faster than the internet. When comparing upload speeds, a test was done to fly a carrier pigeon with a USB stick 50 miles to an internet provider while racing against an internet upload. The pigeon made it in just over an hour, while the upload took over two hours. Most of today's successful companies started in garages. That's right, aside from just Apple, other huge name companies started with humble beginnings. HP, Google, and Microsoft all were started in a garage. Most internet traffic isn't from real humans. About 51% of internet traffic is non-human. Over 30% is from hacking programs, spammers, and phishing. Be careful with your computer security. There is a machine that can predict heart attacks. Researchers trained a machine learning algorithm that was able to predict heart attacks. It can predict heart attacks up to four hours before they append, with 80% accuracy. Millions of tons of technology are thrown out each year. Specifically, 220 million tons of old computers, along with other devices, are thrown away every year in the US alone. Now want to share information on how to behave safely online. You have the right to privacy, and so do others. It is not okay to log into other people's accounts or to use their phones or profiles without their permission. Don't spread rumors or post-share hurtful or embarrassing stories or photos. What may seem like a harmless joke to one person can be deeply hurtful to others. We all have the right to dignity and to be treated with respect. Think twice before you click send, especially if you're upset or angry. Once you share a photo or a video, it's hard to control what happens to it and who sees it. Taking it down is nearly impossible. You can change the privacy settings on your social media platforms to help you control who sees your information, photos, and videos. Think carefully and what you share with whom. It may seem obvious, but don't share personal information like your address, phone number, or bank details. If your privacy settings are not secure, anyone can see this information. Making new friends is great, but before you accept a person, you should have a look at their profile. Try to see who they are. Do you have friends in common? Are you from the same town? Don't feel pressured to accept random friend requests. Remember that sometimes people pretend to be someone they are not, and it's hard to know if they are telling the truth about who they are. Be careful about any job offers that you receive online. Did you apply for a job or contact anyone for a job? If you did not, this could be a scam and you need to be very careful. Do some research about the company or business. Be careful when going to meet some for the first time if you have only met them on the internet. We strongly recommend that you don't go alone. Instead, ask an adult you know well and trust to come with you and arrange to meet in a public place. In conclusion, while technology can bring us incredible benefits, 
it is important to be mindful of its potential dangers. Education and informed use of technology can help us minimize its risks and maximize its benefits. Let's continue to explore this exciting world of technology, wisely and cautiously.